In this demonstration, you're gonna learn how to create a graduated color map. So the first thing we want to do is uh, bring up the uh, Symbology rendering pane, and we're gonna do this on the parcel layer. So I'm gonna click on parcels. I'll then go to the feature layer appearance tab and go to the Symbology button, click the drop down arrow and select graduated colors. Of course, there's other things you can select here and we'll go through some of these as we go through the class, but initially we're gonna select graduated colors now it'll automatically apply um, certain uh, color schemes based on certain fields for you. First thing you need to do is pick out the field that will be used in the graduated color rendering. Um, by default, ArtGIS Pro is going to do that for you automatically. And what it does is just it finds the first numeric field from your attribute table, which in this case is legal area. Uh, but often you want to select something other than whatever the default is. And so in this case, we'll select market value. Uh, the data in the market value column describes the uh, market value for each parcel. And basically it's a combination or a sum of the land value and the improvement value. Uh, but nevertheless, this is a, a numeric field that describes the market value for each parcel of land. So we'll select that and it will draw in our data. And you'll see that uh, there's no apply button, first of all. all right? There's no apply button you have to click uh, to apply the changes. Each time you make a selection, from the Symbology Render, it automatically applies uh, whatever change you've made. Uh, the, by default, the method is gonna be natural breaks, uh, which works pretty well in this case, but keep in mind, you do have multiple options here. We'll discuss some of these different options as we move through the class, but there are a lot of different options for how those classes get defined. You can see that by default, there are five classes. Um, and again, that's just the default. You can make changes to that as well. In general, you don't want to go above about six or seven classes when you're creating graduated color maps, mainly because it gets pretty difficult for the human eye to be able to pick out uh, the difference between lots of different colors. So you want to keep it fairly limited, and we'll, we'll just stick with the default here of five. Now, the method does change the, the result. So, for example, if I come in here and I select something like equal interval, now equal interval uh, with this, uh, the date, data range of each class is held constant given equal class width with varying frequency of observations for class. So that's different than natural breaks, which does more of a statistical calculation of your data. But keep in mind that the way that you define that method is going to have a, a big impact on your, your resulting map. Um, and really, you know, the, the method that you select really depends a lot on your underlying data. So you'll want to spend some time researching the different methods and ensuring that uh, you have a good understanding of what each of these methods do. It's kind of beyond the scope of this short video to, to go into all the different methods, but we will be covering this uh, as we go through the class. Uh, and again, you do want to spend some time with, with the help documentation to make sure you understand the different methods and how, you know, what that's going to result and what the result's going to be if you select some of these different methods uh, with your data. Uh, there's ne not necessarily one right or wrong answer uh, to, to a lot of these different methods, but uh, often one or two of these methods will make more sense for the underlying data that you're using. And natural breaks works pretty well uh, with this particular data set. Uh, it's looking for statistical breaks in the data um, and uh, assigning each um, feature into one of the classes, right? So each of these parcels is gonna be assigned to one of the classes. Of course, you can select a, a different color scheme if you'd like here as well. There's lots of different color schemes that you can uh, apply here. We'll just stick with the default in this case. Now down at the bottom, of course, you'll see the classes. Now, if I were to change this to, for example, seven classes, it will regenerate this so that I now have seven classes instead of five. But again, as you start upping the number of classes, it gets more and more difficult to distinguish uh, with your eye the different colors. You can tell even at seven colors, it's really difficult to distinguish between some of these uh, classes just because the, the color differences are so slight. So we'll stick with five here. <clears throat> now down at the bottom, of course, you can make individual changes to these symbols as well, right? So I can left or right click my symbol. Here I'm right clicking to bring up the color palette. If you left click, that will bring up uh, the Symbology Gallery, which we talked about in a previous uh, demo and earlier in the class. So you can make individual changes to these symbols as well. It's also gonna give you the upper value and the labels. These can be changed uh, just by clicking and, and typing in new values. A lot of people will make changes by going to uh, the advanced symbology options as well. Uh, you can see with our data, it's a little bit difficult to read this data. And this is, this is currency data, right? This is uh, dollar values that have been assigned to each of these parcels. So we might go to these advanced options, go to format labels and changing, change it from category of numeric 
to currency, right? And that'll give us a better feel for what that data actually looks like. Now we have currency data as opposed to numeric data. Uh, and there's other changes you can make here as well, but that's really all we need to do uh, at this point is just change that to currency. Um, of course, you can change the labels as well. So you might do something like, you know, low, medium, low, medium, high, and very high, right? So that might make more sense for what you're trying to do uh, by adding different labels and those show up as different labels uh, in your table of contents. All right, so that's all for this time. Uh, until next time. Appreciate you joining me.